Christmas, the season for families giving and to reflect on what happened to last year's presents. Sometimes they end up being thrown away or donated to a charity shop where they can be got for a song. That's great for the electronic enthusiast because it means cheap salvage components or even giving the toy a new voice. Here's something picked up from a charity shop. I didn't even need to put in any batteries, which is a good thing because the batteries would have cost about the same as what I paid for this unit. Not much to see. A circuit board holds the various switches. Here's the speaker, which we'll have a look at in a moment. The main circuit board. Looks like it's 2013, so only a couple of years old. Nearly all surface mount parts, including the mystery IC. Here's the speaker, potentially useful for QRP portable home brew gear. It's a good backup to have in case you leave your headphones at home and you should be able to fit it into most QRP rigs. So that's at least one useful component in this toy. Bigger speakers are more efficient, so should give a bit more sound, especially compared with the micro speakers that you have in toys. Here, I've connected it straight in parallel with the existing small speaker. definitely a louder and better sound with the larger speaker. Another thing you can do is what they call sound bending. That means opening the thing up and making modifications to produce all sorts of weird and wonderful audio effects, not intended by the manufacturer. The easiest thing to do is to drop the supply voltage. You could use a voltage regulator like an LM317 but the easiest way is simply to put a potentiometer in series with the supply. I've interrupted the power connection by putting a 500 ohm pot in the positive supply line, or the red wire as you can see here. If you've only got a 5k or 10k pot, like you find in radio volume controls, then try it anyway. It will still work, but the adjustments will just be a lot more touchy. To try it out, put your pot in the low resistance position. The unit should behave as normal. Then, once you're satisfied, try turning the pot back, introducing more resistance. You'll find the functions will start to drop off and the sound may change. You may need a higher voltage to turn the thing on than to keep it going. So experiment with the power switch, the function switch, the various keys, as well as the pot. When it's down at a low voltage, the thing just flashes. But as we turn the voltage up, slowly, the flashes get longer. Now it's just changed again. At this setting here, the announcements are a bit clipped. Just at this setting, we've got a loop. Not enough voltage or current to have it go to the full repertoire. Here we're at a stage where it wants to announce a number, but there's not enough juice to carry it through. What? What? 
more sophisticated than varying the input voltage and current is to mess around with the internal circuitry. The first tool you need is a wet finger. You put it across various parts of the circuit board. You might even need two hands sometimes and two wet fingers and try and make all sorts of random connections to hopefully get sounds that the manufacturer didn't intend. Now if you wanted some more exact connections you might just try a screwdriver instead. If you find a part of the board that gives interesting sounds, the next thing you can do is experiment with random capacitor and resistor values. You could try capacitors from a few nanofarads up to several microfarads. Then there's resistors. Anything from a few hundred ohm up to a few hundred K ohm will be able to produce some interesting effects if bridged across the right part of the circuit. That's unless the toy is using an IC that does everything and doesn't have many pins that are accessible for custom effects. One thing to be careful of is very low values of resistor. They might produce something close to a short circuit and destroy or damage the toy. For more information, search circuit bending in YouTube and you'll find numerous demonstrations. So I went to the thrift store and I bought this toy for $2 and I ripped the guts out and I turned it into this thing. To take an innocent children's toy and turn it into something really annoying. Hello and welcome to my circuit bending tutorial. When you give a present, think about what will happen in a year's time. Whether it will still be useful or thrown away. Never discard anything electronic without having a look inside first. You might find some useful parts or even give a toy a new personality.